You are now locked into the Red and Blue Rivalry podcast, the podcast where we talk all things San Francisco 49ers and Dallas Cowboys. My name is Eric Hernandez, and I'm repping the faithful. And I am Philip Enriquez, repping it for America's team. And on this episode, man, we got to recap the opening week for the San Francisco 49ers. They fall to the Arizona Cardinals by a score of 24 to 20. And you as a Niners fan, I, I just got to ask you, man, what the hell happened? I still don't know, man. I scratched my head at that, and it, it was a very painful. You don't want to start the season with a loss. It's not fun. You know, I even, can attest to that. Yeah. You know, you're waiting all year. You didn't even know if we were going to get football. So in, in one aspect, that's cool. But, you know, when the games start, you, you kind of want to walk away. It's a division rival. You feel like you're the better team. So for you to come back and lose, it's just something that it's hard to get over. Especially because, like I said, I felt like they were the better team. But the loss lies in what happened before. Coming into camp and, and, and walking into that game with both receivers, Brandon Ayuk, rookie, and Debo Samuel out. I mean, it's very hard to overcome that. And what I thought was going to happen and what I thought was the game plan apparently wasn't. And you look at everything, you look at Garoppolo going, you know, 19 for 33 for 259 yards and two touchdowns. And on the stat line, it looked But he fun. had a QBR of like 35 or something. Yeah, and that's 9. the problem is that you, the last two times he's played the Arizona Cardinals, he's put up like like three 400 yards. Right. Four touchdowns. He's throwing picks, and I think that's where I'm worried about. Like, is he now too careful? I think he's overthinking. I think when he's he dropped backs and passes, I noticed like a hesitation. Maybe he's overthinking it, and and I think that's why we see like a lot of his throws are maybe half a second too late. I think maybe they're coaching him up to try to make fewer mistakes, but that can also result in him making fewer big plays. Yeah, and it, you Romo you would West. hope, you know. Yeah, you would hope. Some way. You would have hoped that he would have got over that. You know that in this off season he would have been more decisive. You know that he would right. know where they're supposed to go, and I mean the plays, the, the three plays that kind of just were four actually. What stands out to you? Yeah, is is the one where he gets the ball, it slips out of his hand. I don't know if you've seen it where he does like three spins inside the pocket <laughs> and then gets yeah. sacked. It's like that's embarrassing. The one where he's kind of scrambling, he's got Pettis open, and he overshoots him. The other one, the the touchdown that could have won the game, where yeah. he lollipops it up. Like, what was that? You know, what was that? And then the final one, the late throw to, to Trent Taylor. Now, he gets the shoulder of the blame. And you know me, I love Garoppolo. But if this is what he's going to be, then, yeah, they need to start looking elsewhere. The question is for them is if they do look elsewhere – how many quarterbacks are available that are actually better than him? Right. What's the reality of the situation? Yeah. I mean, I go back years with Cowboys fan telling me they have to replace Tony Romo. And I'm like, well, with who? You know, it's not like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady are, are ready and available to be a Dallas Cowboy next week. Exactly. So, you know, what I, what I am hoping for is that when the receivers do come, that he is able to kind of get settled in. I know the offense was going to be receiver-based. I was frustrated with, with Kyle Shanahan. I mean, he said after that he didn't his game plan didn't include a lot of throws to the wide receivers. And it's just like, what? What does <laughs> that even mean? What is that? I mean, that tells you what he thinks of his wide receivers right now in Pettis and, and Kendrick Bourne. And that's what's kind of frustrating about Shanahan is like, come on, man. You know, you need to make do with what you have. And then fine, you're not going to use them. I really didn't see Jordan Reed targeted. You know, all through camp, Jordan, they talked about Jordan Reed. Oh, you know, he's unguardable. He's all this and that. And they just didn't use him. I think he got one pass. Especially with uh, Kittle being injured, you figured you, you could find a way to get the ball to your other tight end. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people are going to point the finger at the defense. And they had their flaws. But they were on the field a lot. A lot. And, I mean, you know, the difference came from this time around from last is, you know, Arizona had DeAndre Hopkins and... I mean, he was able to help him make plays, which you were hoping for. And what my philosophy is, whenever you play a team that you may be better in but has a mobile quarterback, you want to push your lead out. You don't want to keep it close. You don't want to give that team, you know, any type of momentum or belief. You know, you want to be able to close them out. And the Niners had opportunity after opportunity until they didn't, until that defense broke because it was out there for so long. You know, and, and I look at how that's going to affect them moving forward is, you know they shouldn't. They'll be fine this year, but excuse me, this week against the Jets. But 
you know, what you want to see is a little more consistency, and the offense has to get on pace. Garoppolo has to improve. He has to. Or I don't know what they're going to do with him. Well, you know, even on the, like you said, the defensive side of the ball was on the field for the majority of the game. But Kyler Murray was looking like a miniature Michael Vick. I mentioned that earlier, you know, and DeAndre Hopkins is like a godsend to this guy. 14 receptions on 16 targets for 151 yards. God, I hate Bill O'Brien. Think about that. I mean, you know, when you have that number one wide receiver as your number one option, look what he was able to do. You know, he was able to keep that offense on the field, wear out that defense, and pull out a close game against the defending, you know, NFC champions. Ah. It's impressive. I mean, I'm not, I, I do admit that. I have my questions with the San Francisco 49ers offensively, but man, I really feel like it was more good Arizona offense than bad 49er defense. Yeah, I, on that side, I agree. On that side, I agree. He's going to give you, you know, the, the style of defense the Niners have is a kind of bend, don't break. You know, they're going to they're gonna use their opportunities to rush, but I mean, at the end of the day, to me, and I've said this since the day they lost that Super Bowl was, it doesn't matter what the defense is, does the only way this team is going to improve and win that Super Bowl is on the arm of Garoppolo. If yeah. he does not improve, they will not. They won't even make the NFC Championship game. They won't. If he has to improve, he has to. And to his credit, he didn't throw any dumb. I didn't see any dumb picks. There was no know, interceptions. No yeah, he interceptions. Played a clean game. You know. So you're hoping that with the wide receivers back, and I think that was the majority of the offense. You know, with a lot of these guys who are going to kind of build their roles in there with like Trent Taylor kind of coming back after what, a year, two years yeah. off. You know, you're getting McKinnon back after two years who looked good. McKinnon looked pretty good. He caught a touchdown, ran with some speed. I mean, you look at Mostert, he caught that touchdown, that like Texas route, and he just blew past everybody. I mean, you thought it was going to be a route at that point. You're looking at these guys, Jordan Reed and those two tight end sets. That's what I was shocked at. I really thought you were going to see a lot of two things. Two tight end sets, play action trying to get the linebackers on them and a lot of like breaking off the route, you know, like, okay, the linebackers are on the onside the line. They kind of break off the formation line out wide kind of, you know, right. disguise it. And for God's sake, please Kyle Shanahan, no more tight end screens. <laughs> they do not work. They are. That's the worst. Every time I've seen a tight end screen, a kiddo, he's getting blown up. Yeah. Because Garoppolo can't throw that ball accurately, and you're just letting him take shots. Yeah. So for me, they, that's a wake up call. Yeah. You know, I think that they thought I don't know maybe they did think that that they were entitled to get back to the NFC Championship and like no these teams are all better too. You know. Right. And they're gunning for you. And yeah. So you can't just be you know Arizona. That's at least your problems. You have a revamp. Rams I think look good. Seattle, Seattle. You have you know the. The Saints, I mean, if it's a tough road to get back. But, you know, you look at this game, you kind of say if they write the ship, you know, a lot of teams didn't perform well. You know, a lot of teams, you know, we talked it's about. preseason for everybody. For, for right everybody. Now. So you want to sit there and, and you can kind of code it in. Okay, well, if Garoppolo improves like he did, he improved last year. He's always improved towards the season. He gets his rhythm and everything. And I think that's what you're hoping for is that he improves. Ayuk should be back this, this week. Um, they they signed Mohammed. What about uh, Kittle? Kittle, yeah, it's a, a, knee, right? a knee strain. Yeah, they're gonna find out more tomorrow because I think okay. they practice tomorrow how he feels. He just took a bad shot, like like the attack. It was a good tackle by Buddha Baker. It's just that his leg was planted, so his body went and his knee didn't. So he kind of just right. bent in yeah. on it. You know, it's not a good look. Um, but they're optimistic. So is Kittle that he'll be ready to play. I'm gonna be honest with you, they shouldn't need Kittle to beat the Jets. No. If they need Kittle to beat the Jets. <laughs> I, this team, if they lose to the Jets, I really am like, okay, something's wrong. Something is... Panic button time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you're losing to the Jets. Yeah. You know, I don't care if it's on the road. You're losing to the Jets. They, they're they in no way are they better than the Niners at any position. You know? So, We're, looking back at week one, mm -hmm. what's your biggest concern that you didn't have a week ago? I think that, and, and you know... This is saying something, but I think that it's Garoppolo. It really is. I did not expect him to still struggle with certain things, to still be slow. He still looks slow. People talk about, and I've seen it in 2017, this lightning quick release. Well, it only works as long as he knows where he's throwing. And the fact that right. he still looks 
in a the step Tyson slow. Thing. Yes, he still looks yeah. like I'm not sure, and it's like you need to get it on track, dude, because that was the most. Everything else, okay, we lost our wide receivers, fine. So the defense, I knew the defense would have trouble with him. And, I, and again, you, you put a defense out that long against somebody like him, you're going to break. I don't care what defense. Yeah. You know, you're on the field for too, too long. So that didn't bother me. It was Garoppolo. It was slow. You know, his thought process didn't look fast. He didn't look accurate. He had trouble even when there was no pressure. It's it's one of those where, okay, dude, uh, is that a sign of things to come? Is that who you are as a quarterback now? Or is that just a week one kind of knocking off the rust. 